Hi, I'm Charlie with Precision Matthews. One question that I get a lot is, do I need a DRO installed on my milling machine? Is it worth the extra expense? The quick answer is, you don't need one, but it makes life easier. You can make some very high precision parts with a toolbox full of dial indicators, gauge blocks, an assortment of feeler stock, toolmaker's buttons, a good machinist calculator, a pad of scratch paper, a dozen or so charts and tables torn out of machinery's handbook, or you can get a DRO. In this video, we'll talk about some of the basic functions of the DRO and some ways it can make your life easier. Let's get started. The first thing a lot of people want to do is double check that the scales are reading correctly. If you opt to have us install the DRO, we do this check before the machine leaves our facility, but if you install the DRO, there's always a chance the scale resolution could end up being set incorrectly. You'll just zero out the dial indicator, zero out the DRO, then move some set amount on the dial indicator. I like even numbers like a hundred thou or a quarter inch. This is just a sanity check. So close to the reading on the dial indicator is fine as long as you're not getting a multiple or a fraction of the reading you expect. If that's the case, you can check the manual to see how to adjust scale resolution or call us and we'll walk you through it. Almost always, the first step in using your DRO is to let your DRO know where in space the part is. For this demonstration, I created a part with some features randomly placed on its face. We'll start by locating the bottom left corner and calling that the absolute zero. Obviously, any point on the part can be your zero, but we chose the bottom left so that we would be dealing in mostly positive numbers anywhere on the part. We like to keep it positive around here. We won't get into edge finding as that's a whole other video, but we're using one of the most common tools, a wiggler style edge finder. When the wiggler kicks out, we have located our edge and we know that the distance from the spindle to the edge is the same as the radius of the probe on the edge finder. In this case, our edge finder is 200 thou in diameter, so we'll enter negative 100 thou when we find that edge. We do the same on the x-axis, and with that, we've established our absolute zero in x and y. Now that we've found our part in space, we switch from the edge finder to our very special high precision machinist Sharpie marker. Did you know that a Sharpie marker fits pretty well in a 7 16 collet? I was tempted to spin it up to max RPM just to see what would happen, but I didn't want to have to tell my manager that I ruined another Precision Matthews polo shirt. For this demonstration, let's imagine that we need to drill a hole centered one inch from the bottom edge of the part and two inches from the left edge. Because we've already located both those edges, we simply navigate to x equals two and y equals one and drill our hole or put our Sharpie mark. I lower the head to put the mark in place, but you could also use the quill. Now that we have that dot in place, let's further imagine that we need a hole exactly one inch back and three quarters of an inch to the right of that first hole. We don't have to change our zero. We just go into incremental mode, then zero that mode out. When we use incremental mode, we don't lose that absolute zero. So when we're done placing our second dot, we can go back to the to absolute mode and locate our original corner at x equals zero and y equals zero. We're using our MagExact MX100 DRO in these demonstrations, but all of these functions are also available on the MX200, and many of the concepts we'll cover will apply to any DRO. I'll point out that there are many different ways to use a digital readout on a mill, and these are just a few examples. We've linked to the manual in the description of this video, and that manual covers these topics in much more depth than we do here. The manual is a great reference and also guides you through some user selectable settings that we don't cover here. Of course, we aren't limited to just drilling holes at single points in the XY plane. Let's imagine we need to cut a slot exactly two inches from the left side of this part. We simply navigate to x equals two, 
drop the z-axis until our tool is in place, and start our cut. Of course, if we wanted to make a slot in relation to some other feature, we could toggle over to our incremental mode and we still wouldn't lose our zero from earlier, or we could zero our absolute out on some other feature. Generally, I like to think of absolute as some edge or corner of the part and incremental for referencing off existing features, but feel free to argue in the comments about the one truly correct way to use absolute and incremental and why every other way is wrong. One of the most useful features of any DRO is the half function. As the name implies, it allows us to find the halfway point between any two points or features. Let's pretend we need to find the exact halfway point between the right wall of the left pocket and the left wall of the right pocket, right about here. After toggling to incremental mode so that I don't lose my absolute zero, I navigate to the first point and zero out the X axis. Then I navigate to the second point press the half button, and then select the x-axis. That cuts the x-axis value exactly in half. That way, when I go to zero, I am exactly halfway between the value I have and the original zero. Then I'll mark it with the marker. This half function can be used for more than just finding the halfway point between two points. If you extend this technique to a second axis, it can be used to find the exact middle point of features. Let's say I want to find the middle point of the floor in the right pocket of this part, right about here. I do the same thing I just did on the x-axis, then once I'm at zero there, I repeat on the y-axis. I lower the Sharpie a bit to eyeball where that second y-axis edge is, hit the half button, and navigate to zero to find the exact center of this square bottom. Needless to say, the Sharpie is not a precision edge finder, but a Sharpie looks better on camera than an edge finder. And can an edge finder make a nice dot right in the center of a feature? Can an edge finder write a funny quip on the bathroom stall at the highway truck stop? I didn't think so. We're using a Sharpie. You can use the half function to find the center of a hole or boss too. Breaking in here because people sometimes misunderstand center finding on a circle using this method. Note that you don't have to start at the exact middle of the circle as long as you don't move the y-axis while you're finding the two points on the x-axis and vice versa. The halfway point between here and here is still the center. Same if we move it anywhere, between here and here still the center, so don't worry too much about starting at the exact center of the circle that you're probing. Once you have the X centered and zeroed, you can move to the Y and repeat. This will work as long as the feature you are referencing is truly circular. The eagle-eyed among you might notice that this is a half-inch gauge pin, but I actually moved more like 0.45 inches. That's because a Sharpie marker is not a very good edge finder. But can an edge finder write your crush's name in a heart on the cafeteria table? Okay, sorry, I'll stop now. Up until now, we've been working mostly on the XY plane, but we'll demonstrate one method of finding zero on Z. Z height setters like this one are inexpensive and accurate. You just move the tool against the pad until the dial reads zero. Then you know that the tool is exactly two inches above the surface the Z height setter is resting on. Enter two on the DRO and you're all set. The last basic feature we'll cover is the calculator. Let's say you have something at 2.478 inches and you want to add a quarter inch. Once you're in calculator mode, enter the first term, press the Y button to toggle through math functions according to this chart, pressing enter when you get to the one you want, then enter the second term, press enter again and you get the result. 
Yes, milling machines existed for decades before DROs, so you can do good work without one. But if you showed this video to an early 20th century machinist, he would kill to have just the basic features we've discussed. In our next video, we'll go over some of the more advanced features of these DROs, so remember to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss that. I mentioned that there are many ways to use a DRO, so if there's anything you feel we missed, leave a comment and let us know. As always, thanks for watching.